What is up YouTube, welcome back to my channel. So, long story short, ever since I discovered that medium format cameras exist, I've been wanting to have one. If we are specific, then medium format camera with 80mm lens. The look, the compression, the depth of field, everything about it just seemed perfect. And it came down to two options. Sell my kidney and few other organs to buy a digital medium format camera or buy a film medium format camera. And recently I was browsing through auctions and I ended up winning and I got my Mia 645 1000S. Sadly, I only got the body and I needed to find the lens. And finally I found one and I was ready to go. So without further ado, I will roll the clip from the day when I went out to shoot and after that I will talk about what I learned and some struggles I faced. Nothing. I hope I at least nailed one shot <laughs> in this whole vlog that we did because yeah this is so trippy but I will talk about it later. And we are back. I'm super happy to see that I managed to get at least a few shots from my first roll. But not everything was as easy as it might seem. The first problem was that the viewfinder is reversed. This means that every move that I make is reversed in the viewfinder. Okay, I can find a better explanation for this. If I move to the right, in the viewfinder it will show that I'm turning to the left and vice versa. It might not sound that terrible, but when you're trying to set the composition and you are shooting handheld, it's inevitable that you would slightly move your hands. And when would you correct yourself, you would f*** up even more, because instead of turning to the right, you actually move to the left. The same thing happens if I want to get a straight shot. In the viewfinder, I would see that I need to raise camera's right side in order to get the shot straight, and when I do that, it looks even more crooked because the viewfinder is backwards and I actually needed to lift my left side. So I was constantly fighting with myself to force myself to think backwards or in the reverse. But there are two ways how to fix it. Either get an eye level viewfinder or just suck it up and get used to it. And I think with time I, I would get used to it and it wouldn't be that big of a problem at all. But what is a real problem with this camera is the focus mechanism. It basically has a focus ring divided in half, and in order to get the shot in focus, you need to align both sides. I find it pretty easy to nail the focus while capturing things with some sort of a line. 
For example, for this photo I focused on the rim and it was pretty easy to align both sides of the rim to appear straight to nail the focus. But when it comes to portraits, it's really hard to find on what to focus on to align both sides. In the example I showed previously, the portrait was taken very close and the focus was aligned to the eye. But if you take a portrait from a further distance, the focus ring covers the whole head and then it's hard to find something to align the both sides of the focus ring. Also, this was the first time ever I read a camera manual from start to finish. <laughs> So yeah, this experience was a tough one, but I didn't expect anything easy, especially since this was my first time shooting with this camera and film in general. Overall, I just wanted to go out and test the camera and make sure that it even works, and I'm happy to see that it does. However, I did overexpose some of the shots because there is no exposure meter in this camera and I also don't have a light meter, so I just took the readings from my digital camera. I read somewhere that if I'm shooting Portra 400, then on my digital camera I should set ISO to 200, which wasn't necessarily true and it made some of my shots overexposed. I let the lab develop and scan the film, so I didn't have that much room in the post-processing to maybe correct overexposure. But all in all, I am happy with the results, and I'm super happy how this photo turned out. This is my favorite one and I might even print it. What also surprised me is that with one roll of film you can take 15 photos, and at first I thought that probably I would shoot the whole roll of film in like 5 minutes, because with my digital camera I would burst like 50 photos in no time. But actually to shoot a whole roll of film took me around 3 hours. Of course we were walking and enjoying the beautiful weather, but when I shot the film I put so much concentration and focus on one photo that after snapping it I really didn't feel the need to shoot more. It felt that I have done enough. And damn, this thing is kind of pricey. I calculated that with buying a roll, developing and scanning the film in the lab costs me around 230 per shot. So you kind of want to put your best effort in making the photo good with the first try. Although some parts of the process were hard, I still enjoyed it and I for sure had a bigger reward feeling. And to hold the roll after developing and see that there is something going on made me smile. It was like holding puppies in your hand. <laughs> Later on, also seeing the scan photos, it felt really good. It also raised my interest in film photography and I definitely want to go out and shoot more, try different film stocks, try to develop and scan the film myself and there are so many things for me to learn and I'm looking forward to all of it. So yeah, let me know if this is something you would like to see more on this channel. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did I would appreciate the like button, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and keep creating buddy!